Welcome to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower, brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash your 20-minute podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now, here's your host, David Brower. Here's part two of our amazing interview with Jake Eagle. Well, we... We've been doing these now for 15 years. We uh, About 20 years ago, we met an elderly couple. Their names were John and Joyce Weir, and they had been doing this work at that time for about 40 years. They wow. actually developed it. Wow. And they were 85 years old at the time. We'd never met anybody like these people. They were vibrant. They were excited about life. Um, they were open and, 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 and available to share all sorts of things. And so we went to the last program they ever put on, the last retreat they ever put on. We went to it, and my wife Hannah and I were kind of blown away. We just said, this is amazing work. And so we started to study with them. We studied with them for six years, and wow. under their guidance, we ended up taking over the body of work they did. The, the essence of the work is changing the way we speak. It's a linguistic model. They called it uh, perception language. And, and what they were teaching people to do was to talk in a way, to speak in a way where I take complete responsibility for whatever's going on in my life, including my emotions. Mm -hmm. And so I, I never will talk as a victim after learning to speak in this way. So, you know, let's say you and I have an interaction and, and, and something disappointing occurs. Instead of saying, you disappointed me uh, or you made me angry, I would say, I disappoint myself, oh, or wow. I make myself angry, because you don't do these things to me. You know, you may show up 10 minutes late for a meeting, but that doesn't make me angry. You you aren't doing that to me. It's my choice. It, it's up to me how I make meaning of that event. So is that like and, trying to take control of being judgmental? Well, it is in that one of the tenets of this work is we drop the idea of praise and blame. Nice. And, and, and when we let go of praise and blame, we basically stop being so judgmental. Love that. Yeah. And what we're really saying is, you know, if I were born with your DNA and your life experiences and lived in your shoes, I would probably do exactly what you do. So I'm in no position to judge you. The only thing I am in a position to do is say, hey, David, when you do this, um, I really make myself uncomfortable, or I really scare myself. I'm going to give you that information that that's what I do. Not that you're doing it to me. Right, right. This makes it so much easier for people to communicate, because no, the, 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 what happens essentially is we stop projecting stuff onto other people. Yeah, yeah. So, that, so, and the other thing in this work is, is, is that we speak almost entirely about what's happening now. So instead of talking about some event that happened three weeks ago where one of us was upset and we're harboring feelings about it. The question is, what do you need now? What, what can I do for you right now? I mean, in this moment. Yeah. Because I can't go back three weeks and change it. But being in the moment is critical. Being in the moment is critical, and all these mindfulness courses and, and teachers talk about it, but I think the missing piece is the linguistic piece. Oh. They don't take it to this point of saying, Talk about what's happening now as a very powerful way to keep people in the moment. So is that the, I was reading up on some of your stuff, the, the neuro-linguistic programming that, that you've done? Um, no. So, so prior to this work, which was called Perception Language or Percept, prior to that, I was a, I was a uh, NLP, neuro-linguistic programming therapist. Okay. I did that for about 15 years, okay. and that's called Brief Therapy where people have various challenges, issues, problems, and that, too, is a linguistic model. But it's different in that the therapist takes responsibility to shift the client's perception. So I had a lot of power when I was a NLP therapist. As Hen and I learned this other model, it was about empowering the client. Instead of the therapist having the power, the client has the power and the authority to work with themselves. Oh my goodness! And, yeah, and it felt much better. I got goosebumps and, and on much that one. More effective. That's crazy good. Yeah. 
So, so going back to the retreats, they yeah. started off as this program where we were teaching people about how to use language in a different way. And that's all about safety consciousness. Okay. It's all about me taking control of my own nervous system. Because if I stop blaming other people for how I feel and I take responsibility, I start to calm down. I start to be able to have healthier relationships. I start to be able to communicate in a mature way. And as I do these things, my life becomes better and more stable, and I become more mature. So that's been our work for 15 years. That's fascinating. Until until this epiphany that I was telling you about, what happened after we came to Hawaii. And so now the program's shifted a little bit in that we still teach people this new way to use language, but then in the second half of the program, we open up this concept of how do, we, how do we live more of the time in heart consciousness? How do we experience more gratitude in our yeah. lives? Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's really, um, it's taken the program to a new depth. And, and, and this is interesting too, David, it's, it makes it, it's just more fun. I would think so. I would think it yeah. would be because it's so, it's so, um, it's so liberating, you know, it's, it's so freeing. It's so celebratory. It's, but I would think too, as I say that out loud, that some of the people in your retreats may not get it yet. They may not, they may go, okay, I understand the definition of gratitude in Webster's dictionary, but right. how is that going to help me? You know? Some of the people are more attached to their stories than other people, but it's part of why we spend the first part of our retreats helping people understand a, a very simple but profound idea, which is nothing means anything other than the meaning that we give it. Oh, my goodness. Right. That's a T-shirt. Means anything That's other a T-shirt the we right there. It. it should be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or a tattoo. <laughs> or a tattoo. Now you're talking. <laughs> right. right. And so as we... We help people loosen up their attachment to their stories and to feeling like a victim and to feeling burdened by their histories. And as people loosen all of that up, then they become more open to the idea that maybe I can live with gratitude. Even if I'm doing something that's difficult, why couldn't I do it with a a good attitude? Yeah. Why can't I relate to my wife, even if I'm mad at her? Why can't I relate to her in a loving way? Well, just being conscious enough, and there's your word again, just being yeah. conscious enough to pay attention to to that, to ask the question. I mean, it's like as you as you ask the question, it becomes more freeing and you become more accepted or you you find it easier to bring gratitude in your in your life as you let go of the of the so-called negative stuff, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. The moment that we ask the question, and this is why the "Am I thrilled to be alive?" was such a such a powerful question for me. It's a high contrast question, right? Right. A, a lot of people I've, I've asked it to. A lot of people say things like, "Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pleased. I'm satisfied. I have a good life." And I go, "No, no, I know that, but are you thrilled?" Yeah. And and I'm trying to get me as well as other people. I'm trying for us to wake ourselves up and go you know, thrilled. And, and by thrilled, by the way, I, I don't mean, uh, you know, I don't mean that I have to be ecstatic. It's more about being awake and appreciative. Agree. I mean, I couldn't do a cartwheel if I had to, but I can yeah. certainly be awake and alert and appreciative of everything around me. Yeah, exactly. I had a, I had a guy who's kind of a poet with words. He, he, he wrote this to me. Um, I'll just read it. It's two sentences. Sure. He said, Perhaps when you add the idea of heart consciousness to the idea of being thrilled, you slow it down and you become more reverential and more honoring to the root etymology of the word thrill, which is to pierce, to penetrate. He says, that resonates in a much deeper and grounded and sustainable way. Perhaps the thrill is to pierce and penetrate the chaotic buzz of disingenuous living to see what is truly here and live in this place of heart consciousness. Oh my God. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. No wonder yeah, you keep beautiful. that no wonder you keep that handy. I have it right on my desk. Exactly. I look at it ten <laughs> times a day. <laughs> Good for I, you, yeah. man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so I, for me, the journey in the last few months is I, I see myself go in and out. I go from heart to safety, heart to safety. And what I'm learning is that most of the time when I go to safety, which is where I kind of furrow my brow and I hunch my shoulders and I think I have to work or I have to focus, right. most of the time, whatever it is I have to do, I actually can do it with this heart consciousness. I can do it with gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did it this morning with our call. You know, I, I knew you were not going to talk mm -hmm. and I went to my desk and I started to, you know, make some notes. And then I said, why do I have to do that? Why don't I just go meditate for 10 minutes? And when David calls, I'll be in a nice space. Nice. I like it. Yeah. I found myself yeah. doing something a little bit similar in that I, you know, I pulled up all your books and I pulled up your website and I pulled up the email that I got from Courtney Blair and I'm going through, I'm going, why, 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 why? I mean, just start the conversation. Isn't that cool? That's uh, so cool. Yeah. How old yeah. are you? Uh, how old am I? I'll be 70 in July. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm 62. And I, I mean, you, you've been figuring this stuff out, sounds like, for the last 11 years, but wouldn't it be great? If we got the stuff when we were in our 30s. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I was talking with my, my I have a 19-year-old grandson in Oregon. We we talked for a little over an hour yesterday. And we try, we do that without making an effort. And we just started doing that a couple of years ago where we'll talk for an hour, two hours, whatever it is. And, and he is, my God, he's like... Uh, he's like the closest thing to a renaissance man i've ever uh, i've ever seen his faith is like crazy and we get off into these wonderful conversations that that have no starting point they eventually end huh. because we have something to do but we go into all these different places and it makes us smile and it makes us laugh and it makes us you know take a look at the stuff that sucks and go okay well let's try that well, you are both very fortunate oh, because that's unusual. <laughs> it's very unusual. It shocks that's me. That's really special. It shocks yeah. me. I told him that last night. I said, I don't know where we where we came to get here uh, because for the first 17 years of your life, we had no relationship. And now hmm. for the last two years of your life, we're inseparable. I will take that all day. Well, that gives me hope because I have a 15-year-old grandson who he. he he has no interest in talking to me because he's so busy playing video games. Right. But um, that's the way maybe he was. in a couple of years it'll change. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly the way he yeah. was. He had all the video games. He was, oh, my God. And now it's like, in fact, what changed his life was going to Kona. Really? Yeah, yeah. He went to Kona um, on, a, on a mission deal with some friends of his. And yep. all of a sudden, he got in, he got just engulfed with all this unconditional love, friends from all over the world that he'd never met before, uh, going to places in Hawaii that he only imagined, and mm. and just being moved in so many ways. And uh, that really is what lit his fire up. I mean, he was like on fire. Isn't and, that fascinating? Yeah, and now he's back in the states. And uh -huh. we've been talking about uh, the last couple of last couple of months, probably, uh, about what he wants to do, where he wants to go, whatever. And every time a conversation would I, I would come up, I'd say, "Well, Jacob, why are you going back to Kona?" Yeah. And so he told me yeah. last night. He said, "Gramps, I'm going back to Kona." <laughs> he signed up for I think it's called DTS. He signed up for a DTS school. He starts September 27th in Kona. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, um, it's exactly what. You know, I was saying that if we can learn this in our teens, our 20s, our 30s, uh, it's going to change the trajectory of our lives. Yeah, yeah. And you, know, you and I are both fortunate to have learned a lot of these things at a point in time when we can still take advantage of it, share what we learned with other people. Well, but yeah, I love the being story able to, I mean, you do what you do for lots of reasons, I'm sure, but paying, paying it forward has got to be a huge piece. It is. As a matter of fact, the programs we do, we started two years ago uh, having people apply for what we call the Pay Forward Scholarship. And we said, you know, if you, if you see yourself taking this work, assuming it's powerful for you, right. and you can tell us how you'll pay it forward, we'll, we'll, we'll go out of our way to get you into one of our programs. Awesome. And that's what we do now. Yeah. Awesome. And these, I, I've been doing these beta groups uh, I get 10 people together in a Zoom video conference, and I've been teaching them about 
accessing heart consciousness. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we're not even charging for those. We're just trying to get people to open up, to have this experience so they can share it with other people. Wow. You and, and your wife have, nice a, have a magnitude of gifts, my friend, and it's so cool to hear how you're applying them, how you adapt them, how you rearrange them just to make them work in today's world. It's, uh, it's a work in progress, I'm sure, but fascinating. We are all works in progress, and we're still, we're still growing and learning, which is the fun part. That is the fun part. Yeah, the day yeah, I quit learning, yeah. I'm going, yeah, I guess I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, yeah. we got a few Thank minutes you. left. Let's, I guess we'll talk about your books. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so you've got several. They're all available on Amazon. Uh, Rewrite Your Life, An Introduction to Rheology, Speak Love, Not War, An Introduction to Green Psychology, Why Wait to Be Happy, and this is my favorite one, Get Weird, Make the Most of Your Life. And, and, and really, that's the only one that matters because that one <laughs> summarizes everything else. Does it? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's really the only relevant one at this point. Yeah. yeah. And, and Get Weird. Um, is it, it's kind of fun. So the people we studied with, our mentors, their last names were Weir. Okay. And so when people would go to one of their programs, they would say, hey, I'm going to go get weird. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, wow. so that's part of it. And then the other thing is in mythology, there's this ancient story about uh, the three, they're called the three weird sisters. They're goddesses. Hmm. And what they do is one of them uh, measures the cloth of life, the other one spins it, and the other one cuts it. And as they work with the cloth, the fabric of life, they determine people's fate. Oh, my gosh. And so the idea of Get Weird was, was, was essentially saying, take responsibility for your fate, right? Ma- yeah. Manage your life. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's where it came from. And then, and then there is a funny thing, which is that the language, when you use it, when you say things like... Um, I frustrate myself or I delight myself. It, it's a little weird. I mean, it's not hard to understand. Right. But it's different. Totally it's different. different. Yeah. 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 And I, and I would think yeah. because anything that's totally different has a benefit because it gets your attention, w- right? Wakes us up. Yeah. It goes back to what you said earlier. It's about being conscious. Yeah. Asking that question. Wow. Yeah. So what, yeah. are you going to do an audio book of Get Weird? You know, I never even thought about it. It makes sense that you would, given the voice work you do. Yeah. Um, I never thought about it. It's a great idea. Yeah, I think it would <laughs> yeah. be fascinating because you're... Great idea. Obviously, your communication style is great. Your voice is great. And being able to share uh, everything that your wife and you have, have learned and are developing would be... Uh, I think that'd be a fascinating project for you. Well, I'll tell you something you and I might pursue privately. The book is written as a conversation. It's between me and my brother uh-huh. back and forth. Um, it's at a time when he had just been diagnosed with cancer. Oh, wow. Uh, brain cancer. And it was a terminal illness. And he and I started this conversation. I turned it into the book. But but the, what I said was could be fun for you and I to talk about is it would be a neat audio book with two people. Oh, my right? gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in. So, you know, I, I'd love it. I'd love it. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, let's, that's cool. let's talk right. about that sometime because I just, psh, we will. I'm all over that. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, man, this has been like crazy fun and uh, so informative, so educational, so fun, so enlightening. And, and I, I hope a few people out there go had an epiphany or an aha moment or, or go into your, or go into your website, live conscious, uh, live conscious.com and learning more yeah. about what you and your wife do and all the opportunities there. I mean, you have webinars and podcasts and online consultation, experimental uh, retreats and 21-day courses and all kinds of stuff. So, folks, if you even had a moment or even thought about an aha moment, you need to go to uh, Jake and Hannah's website, uh, and that is liveconscious.com. And you don't have to go to Hawaii to learn. But it would be nice. You don't, but it's a it's a, <laughs> it's a special experience. <laughs> hey, Jake, thanks, man. I uh, can't tell you how much I enjoyed this. David, I look forward to staying connected with you. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. All right. Bye. Your 20-minute podcast with David Brower has been brought to you by Audible. You can listen to any of David's podcasts anywhere podcasts can be found, including iHeartRadio, the Spotify mobile app, and at davidbrowervo.com slash your 20-minute podcast. Until next time, thanks for listening.